<sighs> All right, Jordan. Yeah, man. Sorry to, uh, man, uh, what a Monday. I just, I've had issues with Wirecast, and it's weird that I can stream to my channel, but not to, um, you know, the Creative Cloud channel as a scheduled event. Uh, yeah, man. So let's do it. Let me change. So on. All right. Yes, Jordan. Uh, thank you so much for bearing with me today, because this has been a pain in the butt. But let me just pop out the chat. Boom. Let me cha I'm gonna I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna switch this back. Boom. <sighs> yeah, so I'm gonna do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. I can take this from unlisted to listed, and then it should be live, and uh, everything will be good. So there is that. So yes, Jordan. Just checking. Yeah, man, let's do it. Let's just, uh, we are going to go public with this, and then I will have the URL. All right, hello world. Going to dive into photo manipulation for beginners. So welcome everyone. We're going to get this party started. Let's just refresh this. And yeah, let's get this party started, shall we? If you guys are cool with that. This is being recorded, so yeah, you'll be able to look at this. Awesome. Let's do this, guys. So photo manipulation for beginners is what I'm going to tackle, okay? So this is huge. Just how can you manipulate photos? Again, uh, in a playful way, all right, we're not looking at making, uh, I don't want to get into any trouble, we're not doing any sort of unrealistic expectations of beauty, it's kind of the opposite, uh, but that's what we're going to do. So, uh, Dion, to answer your question, I'm going to cover basically uh, editing a photo in a simple way, okay, and then we'll get into really starting to bend pixels around sort of using liquify, the cases where you would use liquify, how to do that non-destructively, diving into puppet warp to adjust content as well. All those fantastic features is the idea. Okay, so uh, that's what's going on. I'm going to dive right into this. So I'm going to share my screen. And uh, yeah, so here we are. Here I am in Photoshop. Again, just kind of starting out at a basic level. So feel free. Oh, feel free, guys, to... Uh, let's do this. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions because I'm keeping an eye on the chat and looking out for you. So, all right, cool. Let's do this. So, uh, super happy to see everyone. We're going to do this right now. 
Uh, starting with this photo, so you can see right here, just keep an eye on the chat, uh, Dion. So this is a typical case. So the easiest thing you can do, in fact, let me just rasterize this layer. Uh, the thing that you always want to do is make sure that you're turning things into a smart object. So uh, let me make sure I can zoom in on that content. So let me just turn that on as well. Uh, if you just right click on that layer, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to use a zoom it. All right, so we could zoom into this. Come on, little guy. There we are. Okay, so right here for this guy, Thomas, I can right click. So that's kind of off screen, but I can right click right on this name and I can convert to a smart object is what I'm doing. So that's going to protect all the pixels because this is the easiest way to just kind of clean up a photo. Okay. So before we even begin camera raw filter. Okay. So that's what I want to use uh, camera raw filter. Okay. So camera raw baked into Photoshop. So from here, once this launches, I can then, this is the easy button by the way. So this is camera raw. All I need to do, right in here is click this auto button. So anytime you just want a photo just to look better, launch camera raw and then click auto. So when I hit auto, boom, you could see it brightens up. So this is a lot, this is a lot better, okay? So I'm also gonna be working non-destructively as well, okay? So right in here, as I take a look, kind of zoom in on this content right here. Yes, we have an issue. Not only, yeah, he's had better skin days. We've all been there, right? Uh, spot removal. So rather than using the healing brush, spot healing brush, rubber stamp, all that stuff, I jump in here and I use the spot healing brush. Again, this is just quick photo manipulation. Let's turn off that. But from right here, I can just go ahead and start to paint over that. Okay, and it will sample from another area. And this is the cool thing, is I can adjust that area, saying, hey, you know what, sample from here, and then put those pixels there. Okay, so that's what I wanna do when it comes to sort of just patching up. And I'm gonna get into some more advanced photo manipulation. This is kind of the easiest manipulation you could do right now. You could turn off show overlay just to get an idea of what it will look like. And the idea here is that you would, um, yeah, so I'll answer that question, is uh, you just eliminate things that will be gone in like two weeks anyway. So any blemish, that's what you're going to want to do. I'm not going to get rid of any moles or anything like that. Uh, I kind of want to get rid of his earring, but that's mean. Click OK, right? Camera raw filter, applying that, and there we have it. Remember, I turned this into a smart object, so we have our before, and then we have our after as I turn this on. Okay, it'll render out that smart filter. Let's get into some more fun stuff, right? We're talking about photo manipulation. Let's talk about cutting out things and having some fun and just kind of give you an idea. Let's switch over to this wolf bear, right? Here's serious photo manipulation, by the way, right? Serious photo manipulation. Okay, to answer your question, Dion, how different is camera raw for JPEGs for camera raw for raw files? Uh, when you're using an actual raw file, uh, it's obviously going to be uncompressed. It's going to have more data there. So it's 100% going to work better, just so you know. Um, I'm dealing with just a basic scenario because I'm thinking if you're a beginner, you probably don't have camera raw. But that's a great question. If you can shoot in camera raw, that's fantastic. JPEG is always going to be compression. Um, so keep that in mind. So again, this is the a wolf bear advertisement. I did not make this, and this is where I typically do a shout out to who made it, but I can't, I actually don't remember they're in Europe, uh, but this is part of a campaign that we're working on. And essentially this is serious photo manipulation. So this is kind of where we want to get, right? I mean, how cool would this be? Right? Just gonna zoom that down. This wolf bear ad, look at all this cool stuff. This is where we want to get ultimately, right, Dion? This is what we want to do. All right. So uh, from here, you can see everything going on, but I'm going to go ahead and take a look at uh, all the different layers. So right in here, I can see this is everything, the lemur, all this good stuff, and then the color at the top. Okay, so if I turn that off, this is a huge file.
There we go. Um, you can kind of see everything is broken up. Okay, so when it comes to manipulating this content, you first need to learn how to like cut out elements, right? So how would we cut out those elements? I'll show you an easy way. In fact, I'll just start with a new file really fast. File new. Dion, buddy, does that sound good, my friend? Let's just make this a uh, web size. Something like that. On white, sure. Let's grab a photo. I'm going to use Adobe Stock. I jump in here. I probably have some miscellaneous people and stuff like that. I have this cool background. Let's drop in this background. Okay, so this is where we'll start. And I should have a bear in here, so let's search for a bear. Or I even have this guy. Hey, I could use him. Sure. Let's see, let's grab this bear right here. Boom, there's our bear. All right, first thing I want to do is I want to actually cut him out, right? Does that sound good? Coming in here, I am going to select him. I'll do this the quick and dirty way. So an easy way to do this is to use, yep, it has it in the name, quick selection. So quick selection tool, I can just start to select what I want, and that's what I'm doing. So when I start manipulating this bear, I first need to isolate the bear. So I'm using this quick selection tool to isolate him because I feel like I'm cheating if I automatically have him cut out. I actually do already have him cut out, but this is back basically how you do it. Cut him out like this, removing parts of the photo by holding down the option key, plus key, minus key, you get the idea. Uh, there it is, there's the bear. And then right down here, if you could see in the, can you see this right here in the lower, let's pull out this layers panel. Um, in the lower right, you can see this little button right here. Um, wait, as I select it, you can see this button right here. This will create a mask, add a layer mask, boom, cut him out, done and done, right? So now he's part of this scene. Looks better. Let's flip this scene as well. Flip horizontal. Boom, there's our bear. It's going to be hanging out in the mountains. Why not? Because that looks like fun. Here's my brown bear. Notice how I missed a part there. That's easy to fix as I select this part right here. Going to my layer mask, filling with black. Okay, done. Now let's get into photo manipulation, right? So I'm thinking, okay, I actually want to maybe make him look like he's climbing up this or something. Like maybe he's down here on this part, kind of climbing up it or something. So um, I am going to duplicate this layer just to be safe. And I want to show you Puppet Warp. So I'm going to go to Edit, down to Puppet Warp, okay? How long would this tutorial last? Probably another 10 minutes because I do have to get on a call. Puppet Warp. Selecting Puppet Warp. What's going to happen? It's going to create this mesh around our fun little bear right here. Okay, so let's just actually let's make sure this is locked. Let's undo that. Um, yeah, cool. That is locked. So pu puppet warp. Selecting that, it's going to give me a mesh, and I can start to add these control points. So now I can really manipulate this photo um, based on these control points or these pins. So if I want to stretch him out like that or move him down, I can do that as well. So let's just apply this layer mask. Let's rasterize this. Give me one second. Here's my bear isolated. I'm going to do this one more time. Puppet warp. It actually can't be a smart object, but I'm just adding a couple pins randomly. But now I can move his head up and down. So this is what I mean when I say photo manipulation, right? Let me actually hide the mesh so you can see what's going on. I can start to tilt him 
accordingly. But the cool thing is, is I can start to nest him anywhere I want. So just by pushing these pixels around, I can ultimately have him hiding, you know, behind these rocks if I want to, right? So I might have this, his arm up and then the rest of his body behind that. But I'm literally just kind of pulling these parts around thanks to this little, these pins and puppet warp. Just like that. Now he's sort of starts to be in position. He needs to be adjusted. His color definitely does. So uh, I could always do that. Okay, I could adjust his color. Probably need to adjust the, the levels, the brightness, contrast, the hue, saturation. That's what I'll do just quickly. Hue and saturation. Kind of looks like he's kind of more in there. That's okay. Let's move on to something else. I'd actually want to kind of point out um, this alligator. So let's take another animal, right? Just to give you an idea, I want to use Puppet Warp here, Puppet Warp, because I want him to fit on the bench, selecting um, Puppet Warp, adding pins wherever I want to control him, so now I can have him so he fits on this bench nice and neat, right? So there's no need to cut and paste and manipulate. I can literally just manipulate this way. In fact, I'll turn off show mesh. Now, uh, what I can do is check this out. I'll change this mode to distort and watch what happens is as I make him smaller or the pins closer to one another, I can make the, you know, his head smaller or larger. So this does give you a lot of flexibility and it's actually just fun to play with. Right, and then there's normal mode. There's also rigid mode as well, so this will make it really kind of more dense and more stiff when moving him around, right? But I like this capability. So with that done, he's fitting in there just fine. And then here's the final fancy alligator, right? Chilling on a park bench, why not? Um... Okay, so um, Dion, you ask, like, how can you be, you be sure the object fits the scene as in enough brightness and contrast? And you are referring back to this original file right over here, our untitled file, right? This is just going to take time. So there, there is a tool. There's, there is a way. Here, let me show you. Let me show you this. Check this out. The, it's going to take you just visually adjusting it based on your eye, okay? There is a way to get one photo to match another, but it almost does it to an extreme, okay? But he needs to match the lighting and the color in here. Uh, typically what that means is levels and brightness and contrast. So it's you just jumping in and adjusting levels, right? So maybe he wants to be you know, kind of darker in spots. So I'll just take that in a little bit. And another thing I'm noticing is he really needs to wrap around in this case, he needs to wrap around this whole area. And let's actually make him smaller. He definitely needs to be smaller. But, you know, he's going to go, like, right here. I need to make sure parts of him are behind some of this rock and then in front of the other rocks. So that's how you start to create depth and then shadow. So, I mean, you probably already know this. But uh, just create another layer mask like that. Let's invert it. Right, and now he's technically behind uh, that rock in places. So as I kind of move him, you can see that he's kind of behind part of it. So that's what I do is kind of move him in that way. And something like, again, like that for starters, right? Sure, it still needs more work, but I kind of want to move on to and show some other, some, some other examples. Um, I use, yeah. Okay, so let me show you something. Let me show you some quick pro tips, by the way. I know this is for beginners, but this is actually an Adobe Stock image that I can double click. So I'm just going to locate this Adobe Stock image. If you right click on the name of it in the tab, you can reveal it in Finder. So you can see here it is in Finder, and it's super deep in all of my files. But I'm just going to copy that file and put it right on my desktop. So there's my panorama landscape. Okay. So if I happen to take another photo, uh, let's go to my alligator one. Let's just try this alligator image, excuse me, layer. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, cancel. 
let's flatten this. Wait for it. Discard hidden layers. All right. Image adjustments. Here we go. Match color. So here's where you can take any photo and you can match it to like another image. So I can actually uh, sort of define that landscape, right? So it's going to take all the colors from that landscape to make it match. Um, take those colors from that landscape and, and apply it to the image that I have open. So you can see the illuminance and color intensity, but you also see what I get here because this actually doesn't look very good. Um, but it is trying to match it to this other image, which is this panorama, okay? So that's typically how you try to match photos, but that's when I say, you know, you, you're you going to have to eyeball it, you know? Most of the time, you're going to have to eyeball it, and you're going to get your sort of the best results, right? Okay, so let's move on. Let's close that file. Let's roll this back to our fancy new guy. A couple other things we can do. Um... Anytime you're dealing with uh, an asset, obviously you're going to have to select um, parts of the image just to show you how to do that really fast. I was using quick selection. Another pro tip when you start manipulating photos is to use focus area selection. So in this case, I wanted to select this guy, focus area selection. It's going to select just him and uh, I can add and remove areas to uh, select as I'm doing right now, okay? And then I can start to refine that as well using select and mask. So that's the easiest way to kind of jump in uh, using the refine edge tool. Get that beard, click OK, done, right? He's extracted uh, from the background. And now what I can do is still have that background and then put like some text kind of behind his head since he's extracted, something like that. Uh, same thing for this guy. If I want to... you know, still use Puppet Warp, I could do that right in here, uh, just to adjust him a little bit. Like if I wanted him to kind of move out of the way of the N a little bit, I could do that. But you can see as I'm changing him and all that fun stuff. Cool. All right, let's move on. More things for uh, facial recognition, actually. Taking this asset, going into liquify okay so liquify is another way to distort elements liquify is where you could obviously have a lot of fun as you start to distort elements um, i can start to push things around so i'm using the forward warp tool will just allow you to adjust and push pixels around as i start to bring in you know his cheek a little bit or something like that there's also budge bulge and pinch as well. I'm gonna do some drastic things to this guy as well. So just increasing that size. I'm gonna increase the size of his eyes if I want to. I can get pretty, have, have a lot of fun with this. I also wanted to show when it comes to manipulating faces, it'll actually recognize the faces. So here's the face tool, right? With that selected, notice how it's recognizing that that's his nose and I can increase and decrease the size pretty straightforward. I can see his face, make it wider or thinner, and then even the eyes if I wanted to open them up larger or smaller. Sometimes the eye that's a little bit farther away might look a little smaller, so I can always adjust that. So you could see the number of things that you could do when it comes to manipulating the faces, right? Photo manipulation. Again, I'm in uh, camera raw filter and if there is a face there, it will recognize it. I could also use these controls down here if I want to, but all I'm doing is manipulating on the object as opposed to using the sliders. All right, and if there's multiple faces, it'll list it as well. Cool, done and done. He's looking good, done. Sure, why not? He's a little happier. He's a little bit more distorted, right? Oh, I gotta get, I actually gotta wrap this up. I wanna just kinda inspire you guys with a couple more. A couple more uh, photo manipulations, right? So we have Antonio here. Um, he actually wants to be an aerospace engineer. Well, what does it take? It takes cutting out his head, and then here you go. Here's Antonio, the aerospace engineer. 
Uh, photo manipulation, sure, but all that's happening there is there's one photo of a guy's head, making sure the angle is right for his head, and basically cutting out his and dropping it on. That's why I kind of showed selection so much, because that's kind of what that means. His face is still a little bright. Um, as you talked to Dion, matching the colors, as you talked about, uh, is kind of tricky. I think even in Is for Isabel's case, she wants to be a doctor, right? So there we have Again, her as a doctor. This actually, I need to kind of adjust the colors, but what's happening here is, again, her face being cut out, and then there's hue and saturation and brightness and contrast being added to get her face to match uh, the uh, original photo, okay? So that's what it takes to sort of manipulate photos uh, is that. So this one, this one didn't work out too well, but there's Peyton for president. Yeah, it still has issues but you guys get the idea. Uh, that's it for me. I actually have to get going. Uh, what we are going to have going on soon is this Adobe Stock contest and a live stream happening very soon. So I kind of want to make you guys aware of that because if we take a look, here it is. This is happening on Wednesday. Make it with Adobe Stock, create an epic work of art. So I have uh, three fantastic um, photo manipulators that are going to be joining me for uh, this stream. That's going to happen twice in one day on Wednesday. And it's all about making stuff with Adobe Stock. And I encourage you guys to sign up for that. I'll post that in the chat and sign off. Thank you so much. I got a meeting to go to. Uh, Adobe Stock live stream. It's going to be on the Creative Cloud channel, and it's going to be Wednesday. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Fantastic. Have a wonderful day, and we will talk to you later, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We'll see you later.